management or other advertisers. Are you a psychic, sensitive, or seeker who wants to learn more? Welcome to the Mystic School with Sarah Wiseman, where we dive deep into all things mystic and metaphysical. Here's Sarah. Welcome everybody to the Mystic School. I'm Sarah Wiseman and we're talking today about mystic visions. Mystic, the mystic visions, the mystic uses third eye seeing to receive guiding visions that recall the past, reveal the present and foresee the future. And of course, um, you know, we're just going to kind of do a little overview today for those of you who are interested in this stuff. And if you want to dive deeper, uh, take some uh, courses to help you do this on your own, you can go to sarahwiseman.com and uh, tons of self-study courses that are very affordable that you can look into. We are having readings today, so you can call in to 888 two nine eight five five six nine that's eight 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 two nine eight five five six nine and we'll be taking readings um, during the show anything you want to call in check in about a lot of you guys are real familiar um, with my work from different shows i've done so uh, focusing on uh Focusing on what is spiritual intuition? What does it mean to be a mystic? How does it all work? So happy to talk with you about that. Again, it's 888-298-5569. So when we talk about mystic visioning, there's a ton of confusion. And there's a ton of confusion um, because uh, so many people have been sort of shown in um, especially older movies, TV, all this kind of stuff, like paranormal shows, they're given this sort of very old fashioned view about how it all works. And a more correct way of thinking about how mystic visioning might work is to think about when you're reading a book or thinking about a movie, you use your imagination to call to recall all of that back into your mind. And so you have these thoughts and images sort of floating in your brain. Like if you're thinking about a movie, you're sort of going to have all the characters, what they look like, what they sound like, the landscape of the movie, it all just starts kind of floating in your brain. It starts floating and you might even find yourself kind of going into a little bit of a daydreamy feeling or a feeling like you're lost in fantasy or you've kind of drifted away. Like you're so involved in this, in this movie that you saw that you're thinking about, you're reimagining it. Or if you're reading a book, um, you might get lost in the characters and you might be picturing the characters in your mind or you might be hearing how they talk and just everything just from the written word you're building a whole imaginal world in your mind so this type of feeling is very, very similar to what happens when you start to vision as a psychic or as a mystic. Um, what, what the movies and so forth now show us is like this, you know, the, you know, everything shifts and morphs and like a big energy thing changes and 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 it's it's very dramatic and suddenly the person seeing this vision you know and it's all shady and there's flashes of light and apparitions and so forth and you know that can happen actually but more commonly what happens is that we see things and it feels like or it has a similarity to thinking about it 
imagining it, um, putting it in our minds. Now, there's a difference, however, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Um, the other way you might think about this is when you listen to really evocative music, especially music that doesn't have any words to it, when you listen to ambient music or um, journeying music or even classical music or music from um, music that has some journeying aspect to it, you'll find yourself thinking about stuff that you didn't even know you were thinking about. You might find yourself going to a strange land in your mind as you're sitting there listening to the music, or you might find yourself having um, memories that you had forgotten that you had, or just everything becomes clear to you all at once when you're on this music journey. And music is perhaps a better way to think about it because um, music isn't a language of words, it's a language of sound, and yet it still takes us to this place of journeying, this place of journeying that we go when we're visioning as a mystic. So how does it work? Mystics talk about seeing with third eye visioning. Third eye is one of the chakras. Um, third eye relates to the pineal gland, which is behind the third eye. Um, and people might talk about opening your third eye or um, seeing with the third eye. Now, I, I don't like for those of you watching the, the video part of this or checking in your own mirror, like we don't visually see a third eye. It's more of an energetic center or an energetic portal. It creates the difference when we're dealing with earth reality. For the most part, we're dealing with our two eyes that see earth stuff. When we're dealing with mystic reality, we use the third eye. We use the energetic eye. We use the eye that sees beyond this particular earth dimension and into the next. And the thing to remember is third eye seeing we don't necessarily see things in the room, such as apparitions, as were shown in the movies. Yes, some people do see that. Some people who have really strong mediumship gifts may see apparitions of the departed in the room. This is common and it happens. But most of us, when we're doing this work, see third eye visionings inside our heads, or from a closed eye position, we see the information just slightly ahead of our own faces. And so we create a place or a portal or an energetic container in which all of this information comes. So if you're in a safe space right now, you can even close your eyes and you can just notice all the gray, black, flashes of light maybe. It's just all a vast wasteland of nothingness, right? But if you start to think about something, say we'll think about a piece of red licorice, like a long red licorice stick that's kind of twirled. And you can kind of picture that in your mind, like you can tell it's there. And you could turn it over. You could even take a bite out of it. All in your mind, you could imagine this. And you might say, well, I'm still only seeing this gray background. That's fine. And yet you can also be thinking about this red piece of licorice and you can see the sides of it. You can see the ends of it. You can sense that it's red. You're able to imagine it. And again, just take another bite out of it. So now you've got a bite on one end and a bite on the other. And you're like, oh, it got smaller. So this is how this mystic visioning begins. We sort of rest in this energetic container where we see visions 
And we start to work in that inner world. We start to work in that inner world. So this is a very interesting practice. And as we continue, and here's the difference, um, we're going to be talking about this more in a minute. When you're working with the piece of licorice and you're imagining it, what you, what you think about is what you get. When you work in mystic visioning, the information that comes is not under your control. The information that comes is from source. And so as you look at uh, what's forming in the future in a situation or what's what the reality of a relationship is or what's going to happen here or what's the answer to this question that you have, you may have a desired answer. Most of us do. But the information you see in third eye visioning or what I call guiding guided visioning is not under your control. It is given to you by source so that the surprise is noticing what's happened in third eye visioning in mystic visioning and then noticing what's happening that you didn't expect and this is where our guidance comes from we look into something and we see what's being shown to us and we pay attention to every detail in this vision that we're working on we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but first, let's go to the phones where we've got a Susan calling from Seattle. Susan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Hi. Yes, um, Sarah, I was calling to see here if you could give me any um, insights here into uh, what uh, I should be looking at as opposed to the career at the moment. Mm um what what have you been finding it, it feels like there's been a kind of a a break time or um a time of 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 searching but not finding how long has that been going on for for you oh probably just about two months okay and when you think about how long you need, which is interesting that I'm saying this to you, but I'm just saying what I'm receiving. How long do you think you need to just not make a decision or just to take a breather or take a break or not? This almost feel like you're gathering your strength again. Um, how long more do you think you need of that? Well, I know I think I have up to a year. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to really, uh, I would think maybe realistically seven months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that this is what's happening. It feels like um, you've been in need of a rest for a while and the universe is like, we're going to make you take this rest. Nothing is going to be happening until you rest. What What were you doing before? What uh, what were you so busy with? So it feels like you've just uh, finished up a lot. Uh, it was I was doing uh, remote uh, work remotely for a company uh, uh, that did uh, it was an administrative, but it was a lot of timelines and pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not going to be doing anything similar to what you have been doing at all. And there is going to be a considerable break time that when you look back, if, if instead of worrying about when will I start again, if you, if instead you treated this more like a sabbatical, like this is a time to explore who I really am now. I mean, you've obviously explored who you are in the past, but this is a time to take another look and to treat this time as a gift. That's really what this is about. This is a enforced break to allow you the gift of some self-exploration yet again to sort of reassess where you are now. Yes, and I feel like I have reinvented myself several times. So. Yeah. I don't know if, if there's even a need to reinvent again, because I'm just 
kind of yeah, tired well, of reinventing. <laughs> yeah, it's not so much reinventing. It's almost like uh, maybe this time it's like letting go of all the things you're not. Um, definitely the, the work that you've been doing is you're not going to do that again. You're not going to deal with that kind of pressure again. So looking for something that's actually relaxed and simple and easy and enjoyable. Correct. That's the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. You know, I don't see anything starting up. There's rest time in, through the summer, so you might as well enjoy it <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and have some fun, you know, have some, have some downtime and some relaxed time. Cause that's, what's being called for now and and nothing no matter how hard you try and get something going um it's an it's an enforced relaxation time right now so hey susan thank you so much for calling i appreciate your call okay yeah thank you thank you sarah bye 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 yeah. Yeah, thanks and looks like we have lou ann from bellingham lou ann welcome to the program thank you hi what can i help you out with today Okay, uh, I was just reading your your daily comment, and it struck a, a chord with me, and so that's what prompted me to call in. <laughs> I've followed you for well, probably five years, five wow. years plus, uh, but I've never taken a course, never thrown myself into, um, yeah. The, the the world that I feel compelled to be thrown into, but I find myself resisting, except for now. I'm, I'm it's like uh, a door is opening and I'm feeling the need to fill it with like-minded thought mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. where I've always been more of a loner and, um, you know, had my journey I can't say solo because, as you say, there are uh, messages and people all around me that uh, I have been open to for a long time, knowing that they are there that kind of have been guiding me <laughs> all along, and I've been open to it. Um, and I don't want to stop that because I feel that's a natural thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think what my point is is that right now it's it's – kind of very um i'm very unsure of things because i just came through uh one of those times where i've lost a husband i mm. you know went through retirement um my daughter-in-law decided to choose her own life so i'm mm -hmm. you know to take her own life and so i'm mm. you know trying to help my son be a single parent um there's a lot of a lot of things going on and i guess um yeah i'm yeah. just kind of <laughs> well, you me, know everything that you yeah. think you're so secure about just kind of blows up <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um well i have two things for you um the first is, I think that if you chose to explore um, any of the work with clairvoyance or the guides or the departed mediumship, I think yes. you would excel in that style of uh, the visioning work that actually we've been talking about on this call. Um, some people have a more of a, an affinity to like hand healing or energy work and some people have more of an affinity towards this visioning work and i think you would find it really really simple and you would excel and this would support you in a lot of these gigantic big shifts in your life that you've been going through you would find support from the other realms just for the, the grief and the emotional sustenance that that you need, there would be a lot of support and understanding there. Um, the other thing is sort of like everything happened all at once, but what's ahead is not more tragedy or grief at all. It's quite smooth sailing ahead for quite a period of time. So just being able to trust 
like there's not another shoe to drop for you. Um, okay. Yeah, you can kind of relax. Like there's no other big horrible thing. It's uh, very gentle ahead. And so um, just taking that as, you know, it's just sometimes nice to know like, wow, I don't think I could take any more. It's like, you don't have to take any more. This is, this is, that was some kind of passage for you and the rest is easier. Um, I'd love for you to just go to the website and maybe take uh, one of the, um, the psychic courses and just try it out. I think you'd be stunned <laughs> how good you are <laughs> at it. It's going to be so easy for you. Well, um, Luann, thank you for calling. Thank um, you. I need to take another call, but I think things are going to be looking up for you uh, and things are going to feel easier um, okay. before you know it. Not, not, not perfect. There's a lot of grieving still, but they will get easier. So. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of grieving. And yeah, it, it, yeah. but I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Well, and I and I appreciate that. Yeah, I've been kind of delving into, you know, clairvoyance. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, been drawn to that. So thank you. That was a nice, um, you know, verification or, or you know, support on, on knowing that that would be a direction that that I may, you know, get some, yeah. some resolve. If, well, you know. I you know, I work with a lot of people with lots of different gifts and I can just tell that's going to be your area. So just go for it and see what happens. It'll be really interesting for you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for Thank calling you. in. Yeah, let's go with, yeah, we have um, Deborah from Arizona. Deborah, welcome to the program. Hi, Deborah, are you there? Yes. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. What can I help you out with today? It's so nice to connect with you. I'm really happy, and I found you. You've been sending me in your newsletters, and I realized that you had a you're on the radio today. Yes. So I'm so excited to connect. And, yeah. And um, yeah. So yeah, just kind of. Um, I've been also going through a lot of significant changes in my life, um, and I definitely feel an energetic shift around me. And um, I believe it's in the healing art for myself. Mm -hmm. So I keep messages, and I'm up near, I'm fairly close to Sedona. Mm -hmm. So that's like a spiritual mecca, as you know. Yes. And so I keep being called to maybe um, go out there and take some classes in some areas of possibly sound, um, sound mm -hmm. frequency healing mm -hmm. and working with crystal bowls and um and i'm also online with a group um that work with dolphin uh channeling mm -hmm. and frequency mm -hmm. yeah so i just kind of want to explore and just kind of get your feet because i was reading your newsletter about the you know the sudden transformation and just the uptick of everything you know in this area so yeah that's yeah. kind of where i'm at and recently what? had the loss of my husband too oh yeah, people have been going through these massive transitions for sure. Um, I think that working in for you, so it's interesting, people are different. I think for you working in sound healing, energy healing, and even some shamanic style ritual would be right up your alley. Um, so mm -hmm. funny people are so different you know um but i think yeah this would also uh the the sound healing itself would be incredibly helpful for you to process some of the grief and sort of get through that more easily so and i don't know any groups to recommend sedona is like filled with many many <laughs> spiritual types yeah. Um, so just, you yeah. know, choose what you're led to. The universe always takes us, you know, you're going to see that little notice on the bulletin board in the old days. And just nowadays you'll get it in your email. <laughs> just go ahead and go ahead and find the place. But I think that I, I think that the tonal, the tonal stuff is going to help you um, release a lot of emotion right now. And that would be the thing I'd start with and then after that i would not be afraid to do some kind of shamanic ritual 
um, in nature mm -hmm. that would also be I, yeah. I don't mean um, I don't mean like like uh, like ayahuasca or anything like I just mean um, non substance right. would, would be I, I'm not I'm not so keen on substances uh, I like to do all of this stuff uh, totally totally clear and totally pure because you can go tremendously far in all of this work um, you don't need any substances right. to take you there so anyway oh, um, yeah. try that try that and see how it goes and it feels like okay. Deborah, I and also oh sorry to cut you off but it feels like um, no doing this like pretty quickly like next weekend like you're ready there's no need to wait for anything yeah you know that's what I keep getting. I mean, I can act, I'm very, my body is very sensitive and yeah. I can actually feel that I'll ask questions. And then when my body lights up or when I'm talking to somebody and I'm on a subject and I, I just say what pops up, yeah. my whole body just, I yeah. get tingly and pumps. <laughs> yeah. What is that? So that's like my confirmation that yes, that was a right, yeah. you know, intuitive response, you know? So, yeah. So it's, kind of moving through right now you're saying yeah I think I would jump on the sound healing like uh sound baths with uh, bowls that type of work I would do that as quickly as possible and that will help okay. even out some of the stuff that you've been going through hey Deborah, thank you so much for calling I need to end up the show but um you're on the right path so keep going okay well, yeah thank for your help thank Absolutely. you for your Basically, my little voice to stop what you're doing and call Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. Well, thanks for calling. All righty. Well, those of you guys listening, um, we're talking about this every Tuesday. Uh, we have callers. We have teaching. You can find everything on all of this stuff at sarahweisman.com. Tons of we, people have been mentioning the daily divine teaching newsletter. We've got the divine astrology and more. It's all at Sarah Wiseman. Dot com. Want more of the Mystic School with Sarah Wiseman? Tune in for Uplifting Talk on Psychic Opening.